friends, hope you are well. I started work on a Minister of Battle Host box recently as part of my commitment to finally play a game of MESBG. And while I'm batch painting all the warriors and knights, I wanted to give the heroes of our army a bit of extra love and attention. So I've got Gandalf and Pippin here in both mounted and unmounted variants and I've been really excited to paint these but also kind of dreading them. Our Hobbit friend will be really straightforward but Gandalf and Shadowfax are going to be a bit of a challenge for me because I always struggle to paint white in a way that actually looks good. But I will do my best and see what kind of paint wizardry I can work. So get comfortable and prepare yourself for another aggressively mediocre paint job by your boy Big Swamp. And actually, first of all, in my last video, I was talking about how good primary miniatures with black is, which is very true, just not if you're going to be painting white. So before I go any further, I base coat my Gandalfs and Shadowfax with some Morgas bone, which should make it a lot easier to cover. Nothing like making extra work for yourself. <sighs> right, I'm going to start with the outer robe that Gandalf wears, which is actually more of a cream colour. So I lay down a couple of nice coats of some Yu Shabti bone here. And I heard that in the books, Gandalf is actually a pro wrestler called Gandalf the Cream Dream, but they changed it to Gandalf the White for the films to make it simpler. But I can't actually read, so I haven't been able to confirm this information yet. Subscribe for updates on this developing situation. Next, I'm slipping on a layer of Screaming Skull to about 80% of the area I just covered to start building some highlights, making sure that it doesn't spill into any of the recessed areas I want to be darker later on. And I was thinking of continuing to build up the highlights now but I decided it would be better to go back to the shadow so I mix in a tiny bit of Yushabti bone into some gore for brown I thin this mixture down a lot think like Christian Bale in the machinist kind of consistency and then start glazing it into the areas I want to darken down like the folds and creases and undersides of the cloak for the areas I want to be darkest I apply a few coats of this and then use screaming skull again to touch up any others where I've gone a bit over the top which I do every single time I paint something with those shadows added I mix a bit of pallid witch flesh into the screaming skull and start going around using this as a highlight I apply this to less area than I did the screaming skull alone focusing mainly towards the edges and tips of the cloak. And as a very final highlight, I use a tiny bit of pure matte white on those same areas I just hit. Trying my best not to overdo it here. You don't really need to use much pure white to be honest. You probably want to aim for about, mm, say, six and a half times the amount of liquid paint that 232 ants would consume in one sitting, or around that measurement anyway. It doesn't matter too much, but if you get it wrong, you will turn inside out. Anyway, that's the cream robes done. I won't lie to you and say they look perfect, but we're on the right track. So, now I want to paint the white bits, being Gandalf's inner robe, his staff, walking stick. oh, sorry, walking stick, and Shadowfax's skin. I start by base coating these using some ash grey, and I like ash grey as a base coat for white because it looks relatively believable as shadows in the recesses when we build up to a pure white. Much more so than if we just whacked down some white and added some shadows with some Nuln oil or something similar. Once that's on, I mix in a bit of Ulthu and Grey to the Ash Grey and begin building up towards that white by applying this mainly to the raised parts and edges which the light would hit. It doesn't look drastically different to the last coat, but I'm just trying to slowly build up to the white so there's no jarring transitions. After that, I use some Ulfu and Grey on its own, and again apply this to about 80% of the same areas I've just hit, trying to keep this out of the recesses as much as possible. And I have to say, I was actually having loads of fun painting this, especially on Shadow Facts. I've painted a few horses before and always found them to be a bit of a pain, but all the definition in the musculature of Shadow Facts made it a lot easier to know where to focus my lighter coats. And quick side note, I've never really understood why Shadowfax is called Shadowfax because shadows are black and it's much white as it gets. If you know why it's named this, then please send word by Raven immediately. Anyway, I crack out the matte white again to finish these white bits off, again hitting less area than I did with my last coat. You know the drill by now. But I'm also not stingy with the white. If an area is reading too much as grey, then I just blast it but try to be a bit careful to maintain some of that slightly darker grey in the shadowed areas. And that is all she wrote, my whites were finished. 
The minis were looking pretty weird at this point to be honest, but I thought it was probably because of all the other bits that weren't painted yet. So let's whack those out, starting with our boy Shadowfax. <laughs> First up, I paint on his nose using a little bit of Skaven Blight Dinge. And have you guys ever felt a horse's nose? They're genuinely so soft and nice. I highly recommend you go out and touch your local horse's nose. Well, actually, maybe don't. I don't know. Um, I use the same colour to paint on the hooves, and then I turn my attention to his lovely mane. I go for a similar creamy colour to Gandalf's robes, so it stands apart from the skin, first dry brushing on a coat of Screaming Skull, and then a subsequent layer of Pallid Witch Flesh. 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 I was going to mess about using a fine brush to pick out the individual strands of hair, but I actually really liked how the dry brushing came out, so didn't bother with that. Once our majestic horse lord is finished, I move on to young master Peregrine, Fool of a took. and I'll finish off the last few details on Gandalf as I do so. There's not much of him to paint because he's so tiny, so we'll make short work of this little hobbit boy. First up, Skaven Blight Dinge is back at it again, going onto the tunic thing on the front, as well as the gloves and little sprouts of trousers down here at the bottom. I went for some Caliban Green as the base coat for the cloak, and then use some plate metal metallic paint for the helmet, bits of chainmail, and the swords and scabbard details for both the vertically challenged cheese loving mushroom thieving hobbit and the unpunctual colour shifting melon wizard. Melon. I tickle on some greedy gold for a few more metallic details on the gloves and hilts, and then paint on the few remaining straps and pouches using some rhinox hide. And by now, I was starting to feel a bit lost actually, because I hadn't used any of my painting cheat juice yet. So it was time to whip out a couple of washes to add a bit of depth to select details, using Nolan Oil on the tunic and silver metallic details, and Agrax Surfshade on any golden bits. While Daddy's magic juice dried, Ooh. I mixed in a little pinch of Lauren Forest to the Caliban Green from earlier to start adding a highlight to Fool of a Took's cloak. And then I gave it another finer highlight using Lauren Forest on its own, which looked quite subtle when it was finished, but I really liked how it came out. Sometimes less is more. Next up in this great journey, I used some Dawnstone to highlight the grey tunic, the gloves, the trousers, and also ran a little down the edges of the sword sheaths. I do the same thing for a few straps, belts, and Pippin's pouch. Wonder what he's got in there. This time, using some Mournfang brown, and then finally paint on the tree insignia using some Ulthan Grey just to help it stand out. Usually I'd highlight or at least touch up the metallics, but I'm quite liking the dull down look of it on these minis, so I think I'll leave it alone this time. Meaning all we have left to do are the hands and the heads, which I tackle in three stages. The skin of both minis will get the same treatment with a base coat of some Bugman's Glow, a quick slosh of some Reichland Cheat Juice, and then I take my time a bit more in adding some highlights. I add in a touch of Cadian Flesh Tone first, and then come back in using some Kislev Flesh a bit more selectively to put a bit of brightness into those cheeks. Gandalf's hands and Pippin's hairy little feet also get the same treatment as the flesh, with those foot tufts getting coloured in with some Mournfang Brown. I then base coat the hair of each one using Ash Grey for our Wizzy Boy, and Mournfang Brown for our Knee Height or Grasshopper Hobbit. A wash of Nuln Oil goes onto the grey and some Agrax Surfshade onto the brown before using some matte white and scrag brown respectively to bring the luscious locks up to the appropriate colours. For the eyes it's the same old same old using my smallest brush to paint on a little white squished circle shape and then mustering all my concentration to try and add in the pupils with a little black dot. Gandalf's eyes came out alright if not a little wonky Pippins, well, the less said about those, the better, I think. Almost forgot to paint these little brooches on the robes, whoopsie. Gandalf gets a silver one, Pippin gets a green one. Nothing fancy, but I can say I didn't forget to paint everything for once. But they were all of them deceived. Because I'd forgotten to paint Shadowfax's eyes. Hmm. And finally, to finish these off completely, I splodge on a bit of PVA glue to the base and then scatter on some base ready mixture and a little bit of flock. I know most people go for cobblestones for Minas Tirith models, but I'm just not a big fan of cobblestones to be honest. I prefer a natural looking base, so I'll just make believe that they've ridden out onto the Pelennor fields instead. 
a rim job of steel legion drab for each of our big tough heroes and they are finished so i'm pretty happy with these like i said at the beginning i'm far from the best at painting white so it's always a challenge for me to try and do so i'll start by mentioning the bits i don't like which are mainly the chalkiness in some of the white areas and the little textured bits i've got going on here and there and the chalkiness is hard to avoid sometimes it can come from over thinning your paints but also some paints especially whites just have a chalky finish when they dry We've probably got a bit of both going on here, which isn't ideal, but also isn't the end of the world either. The textured parts I mentioned probably come from not allowing the coats adequate time to dry before applying the next, which is easy to avoid, but I just really enjoy painting these and maybe being a bit over eager at times. So learn from my mistakes and make sure you give each coat time to dry properly before applying the next. I could also go on about how some of the blends aren't great and the eyes are wonky, but to be honest, I do really like how these came out. Sure, they're far from perfect, but they look pretty good, especially from tabletop distance, and there's no denying who they are. I had loads of fun painting these and would say that Shadowfax was unexpectedly the highlight for me. I was expecting to have an absolute mare painting him, as I have with other horses I've painted in the past, but the paint was just flowing onto him nicely. A big part of that was definitely because of the sculpt and the detail and the musculature like I said earlier, but also probably just for my excitement to paint something from my favourite fantasy work. I think this was the third Lord of the Rings video I've made of my channel so far, and there's probably going to be a ton more of them in the future. I've got a couple of Lord of the Rings dioramas planned, and if you have any interest in seeing those, then feel free to subscribe and stick around. And before we head off, we'll just head to our correspondent in the field, Bullbag Baggins, to see what he has to say about these miniatures. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, Bilbo. Back to the studio. Thank you for watching, my friends. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this, let me know if you think it sucks and I paint as well as a blind snail, and feel free to subscribe for future content. I will be back very soon with another video, see ya.